You could see the death and destruction coming from miles away, and literally no shelter above ground would suffice. A great idea turns into a popular franchise, and plenty of folks keep lining up to join these gyms. Dr. Garza says LISD isn't interested in selling the property at this point. With Nicole Garza. Fall is quickly approaching, and you know what that means, flu season. Temperatures may have been well over 100 for this year's Father's Day, but that didn't stop most folks from getting out and enjoying the holiday. And now, what are we making, Sammy? These are thumbprints. Thumbprints. And I just kind of, oh, <laughs> perfect. Mine, That's well, beautiful. Mine's pretty deep there. Last minute amendments and newly discovered money, the latest in the ongoing struggle to balance the Texas budget. The body has not yet been identified by the medical examiner's office. However, Stevens did say it is that of a young white female who matches the description of Elizabeth Enan, who has been missing since January 5th. Our Nicole Garza joins us from the newsroom with more on the recent takedown of a West Texas kingpin in that brotherhood and the threat that still exists in our community. With 63 confirmed members in the West Texas region alone and at least twice as many men associated with the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, it's a large scale operation, full fledged criminal operation that is. Police say the group with ties around the world is unstoppable. You got narcotics, you got prostitution, you got murder, you got aggravated robberies, you're, you're talking about home invasions. An investigator with the Lubbock Police Department whose identity we are protecting says business is the group's number one priority. So much so that they'll even force their female counterparts, the Featherwoods, to be prostitutes. Although they they talk about family values and stuff like that, their, their white pride organization so forth, they're all about business. They're all about making a dollar. The investigator says LPD is on top of things. The RICO acts, stuff like that, they try to target these groups to make them say, hey, it's not as glamorous as you think it is whenever you're doing four consecutive life sentences behind bars. They've been following the so-called West Texas General John Clark for years. We knew when he was released, we knew where he was going, we knew how long he was at there, and we, we knew when he arrived in the Lubbock. Dustin, a former prospect to the gang, says he helped lead police to the arrest of John Clark. For safety reasons, we've distorted his appearance. I do have a $10,000 bounty on my head, if that's what you're asking. He says his fallout with the ABT began while he was being investigated by LPD for carving a swastika on a co-worker's car, a crime he says he didn't commit. My wife found out at that time, and she got very mad. <laughs> she left me no option either get out or she was gone. Dustin says he then skipped out on a meeting with the Brotherhood, also known as church. My phone blew up that night. He says John Clark or Thumper wanted to know where he was. He agreed to meet with him at his home. He looked over and saw my wife. She was texting. He thought she was on the phone. And that's when the gun came out. Dustin, who's listed as a victim in an arrest affidavit for Clark, says he's scared knowing other ABTs are looking for him. I'm, I'm afraid because, I mean, I know the heat's on. The Aryan Brotherhood, and it's just a matter of time of when they come looking for me. The investigator says Thumper, the general, has been convicted of multiple crimes in the past and is very capable of operating from a jail cell. Police say though his recent arrest will cause some temporary chaos for the ABT, it's not enough to stop them from operating on Lubbock streets. Reporting live from the newsroom, Nicole Garza, Fox 34 News at 9. Once a marine truck driver, now a student in the civilian trucking world. My job was uh, motor T, motor transportation, so I already got a little head start on driving these trucks. While in the military, Mark Perez says he hauled everything from personnel to cargo. Last duty station was in uh, California. Uh, headquarters 5th Marines. I did a tour in Iraq. We were stationed there in Fallujah. He sums up the experience in three words. Fun, exciting, and dangerous at the same time. Doyle Russell is the senior instructor at international schools at South Plains College. He's been driving trucks for 40 years and teaching his craft for 14. He keeps close tabs on trucking companies and says the shortage is evident, especially for one long distance or over the road company. And they're short, probably 150, 200,000 drivers. Four 
weeks of school, $3,600 worth of tuition is going through the truck driving course really worth it all when you can do it on your own? Russell says it is. What do you think? Get out, graduate, go to work making forty to $60,000 a year. Depends on, you know, what job you want. Russell says most companies prefer or even require a driving course certificate and having those credentials can easily pay off. And a lot of the over the road companies, they pay back the tuition. Plus, the state of Texas may make it law. He says that would mean drivers would have to go to truck driving school before getting their commercial driver's license. As for Perez, he's looking forward to his prospects and has a few possible jobs lined up. I got a lot of habits I got to break because there's a lot of things different out here when uh, the civilian, I guess, uh, DOD inspectors come checking you. Uh, a lot of things we did is different than out here in the civilian world. The next course at South Plains begins at the end of the month. Russell reminds those interested a good driving record is required. Nicole Garza, Fox 34 News at 9.